Welcome to this overview of Tableau Public. Tableau Public is a fast and easy way to create data visualizations and publish them to the web, and it's completely free to use. This video provides a short overview of how Tableau Public works. Subsequent videos in this series will focus on the individual steps involved in the whole workflow process, including how to use different types of data sources, how to clean and analyze your data, how to create and format different types of interactive charts, and how to publish the final viz, as we call it, to the web and embed it into your website. In this and subsequent videos, we will use the data set from the World Bank that looks at CO2 emissions by country since 1960. With this, we can answer questions like, who are the largest polluters in the world, and what are the trends in CO2 emissions over time? You can download the exercise workbook to follow along in your own copy of Tableau. Let me open up a copy of Tableau Desktop Public Edition right now. This is available for download for both Mac and PC on public.tableau.com. If you're using the personal or professional editions of Tableau Desktop, you can still follow along with these trainings. In Tableau, we first select the type of data we want to use. Here, we're working with an Excel file. Navigate to where the file is saved in your hard drive and open it up. Tableau will connect to the data file and you can open up your desired worksheet by dragging and dropping the sheets here. Tableau then creates a preview of our data set. As we can see, our data set contains a country name, country region, the year, and measures of how much CO2 has been emitted by country. We could make modifications to our data set here, for instance, renaming the columns, or transform the structure of the data set. We'll look at how to do this in a later video. If we're happy with the preview of the data, we open our first worksheet where we can start our analysis. There are different ways of creating charts in Tableau. One of the easiest is by simply dragging and dropping the fields, which are listed on the left-hand side, onto the canvas, which is a white space right here in the middle of the screen. For instance, I can create a world map by simply dragging and dropping the country field onto the midsection of the canvas. You can see this gives me a dot for every country I have in my data set. I can now add more information to this map. For instance, by dragging the CO2 per capita onto the canvas, I can resize all the bubbles to show us how much CO2 the countries are emitting in relation to their respective population sizes. It looks like Qatar has been the biggest polluter in per capita terms. I'll now do some manual adjustments to the formatting of this chart. I can add color by dragging the CO2 per capita onto the color tile. Let's edit these colors as well. I'm going to use a red-black diverging scheme where red shows the countries with the highest CO2 emissions. Let's rename the sheet as well. Let's create a second chart and look at the evolution of CO2 emissions over time. To do so, I open a new worksheet and let's look at the same field, CO2 emissions per capita. I'll double click to add this to my canvas and see how it changes over time. We can see that for the world as a whole, CO2 emissions have been increasing over time. We can also see the rate of increase has changed over time. Let's add country to the view as well. We can now see that for instance, Qatar, which stood out on the previous chart, sees a downward trend in emissions, while other countries like Trinidad and Tobago show an upward trend. Once I'm happy with my chart, I can polish it up with a bit of formatting to make the design of my various elements consistent. So once again, let's add CO2 per capita onto color and make sure the colors match our previous chart. Before moving on, I'm going to give my tab a new name to make sure I don't confuse it later on. Next, I want to combine the two charts I have created into a dashboard. I create a new dashboard by clicking on the middle icon at the bottom of the screen. I can see the charts I've created on the left hand side and I just need to drag and drop them onto the canvas to start combining them. 
Let's add the CO2 per capita sheet first, which is our map. Then add our line chart. I can choose the size of my dashboard depending on where I plan to share or embed the final visualization. I can move or remove the legends. And I'll make the map a filter of the second element by clicking on this little funnel symbol in the top right hand corner here. This means that I can use the world map to filter the lines in the line chart below. If I click on Qatar on the map, I get to see the timeline for Qatar in the other chart. Clicking on it again will reset the view. I could now spend more time formatting the dashboard and I could also add other elements like titles, annotations, images, and even web pages to this visualization. I'm going to add a title. And once I'm happy with how my visualization looks, I can publish my chart to the web. To do so, I need to have a profile on Tableau Public. You can set one up for free on public.tableau.com and store up to 10 gigabytes of visualizations there. Once I log into my account, I can give the visualization a good name and Tableau will load it up onto the Tableau Public platform. It will open the Viz in my browser. From here, I can verify that all the interactivity I've built is working online, and I can also share my visualization via social media or email, or I can copy the embed code and paste it into the HTML of my website or blog. As you can see, Tableau Public lets you explore, create, and publish data visualizations in no time at all. We hope you like this overview and that you are inspired to create your first viz on your own. That concludes our overview of creating a visualization in Tableau Public. Thank you for watching and we hope you'll continue with the other introductory how-to videos to learn more about Tableau Public.